You're now listening to the Something Good Podcast Network. Please press any key to continue. Alright everybody and welcome back to this week up uh, this week's episode of the Couch Brotatoes. I am Alex. Morse. And God, we take a week off and I can't even say the fucking intro right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, we had to take a week off. Both of us have been really damn busy trying to get our fucking houses in order, yeah. <laughs> so to speak. Both of us started new jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm finally out of that damn warehouse that was like sucking my energy. It's crazy. The last job I had was a glorified desk job. I was basically a shipping manager. Mm. I was watching stuff come in and out, making batches of stuff, you know, for new shipments that do come in, you know, adding items to eBay, X, Y, Z sitting on my ass all day. Yet now with my new job, I'm on my feet and walking around doing things. But at the end of the day, I feel less tired. Yeah. Well, you're, you're in, you're in the storefront now. Yeah. It's the whole warehouses meant to beat the fuck out of you <laughs> i think it's just all that damn fluorescent lighting it's fluorescent lighting the the, the weird concrete floor mm-hmm. yeah the, the yeah. smell of death and the death <laughs> <laughs> so i finally out of that is I, i'm semi back in retail hell but this is the first time uh at least in this retail experience within the first few days i didn't go Oh, I'm going to hate this. I hadn't reached the oh no, I think I'm going to hate it portion yet. And usually in retail jobs, that happens within the first day or so. No. And then you just persevere after that. Yeah, you, yeah. you you accept the fact you're going to hate it. You just bite the, you know, you bite the shit and move on. I hadn't hit the oh no part. So mm-hmm. that that's at least pretty promising on that yeah. end. And you're out of um, what we will say now, Panera. You used yes. to be working for Panera. Now you're out of there. And you're back in an old field again. Yeah, I'm back in solar. And now because of that, you hadn't even fucking been in town. Yeah, I don't. I live here probably about eight days a month now. <laughs> yeah, so not even a week. <laughs> so that. you're averaging me. Yeah, yeah so we're, we're paying rent for a place we don't live. <laughs> me and you could literally be homeless. It would be fine. <laughs> we could just like stop paying rent on this place. And we could we- just ask for a storage unit besides your other storage unit and just sleep there we would be okay <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, 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 let's do that let's just get a storage unit It'd for like cheaper for like 350 bucks bro a nice one bro bro and just put all our climate shit there. control climate control got electricity fuck yeah fucking set we'll take alternating saturdays and sundays <laughs> but uh because you've been on the road so much we might have to make a new segment of the couch potatoes on the road with chris morrison because you seem to be having wild and crazy stories last week you were in georgia yes, essentially so, all week. I was in uh, Savannah. I was in Hinesville near Fort Stewart. Mm-hmm. And then this past week, uh, coming back, we record these on Saturdays and Sundays. Mm-hmm. When you came back on Friday, you were in D.C. all week. Yeah, I was in uh, D.C., Fredericksburg, uh, Harrisonburg, all of Virginia. I did like basically the Civil War tour. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is like the, the, the Fredericksburg and Mechanicsville and all these little places where a bunch of Yankees and Confederates got killed. <laughs> and, like So, yeah, I, I've, done, I've hit every little part of Virginia. I'm going back this week. Too, really? And uh, I'll be ending uh, my uh, site in Meebane, North Carolina, which is outside Liberty, going between here and Durham. Now, does it seem like that's going to be a weekly thing, or are these just oh, like I'm, I'm extenuating gonna, circumstances? No, I'll be going Monday through Friday for my job. Damn. Uh, yeah, that'll be my that, job. That's your constant. That's my constant. I get my 48 hours off. I get paid double on Saturdays and even triple on Sundays. Fucking hell, dude. Make, yeah. that, make that green. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, but 14, 14 days on the road is still 14 days on the fucking road. Well, you know what you ought to and do? my Spanish is poquito. <laughs> what you ought to do, though, is uh, start creating voice memos mm. on your phone mm. of like just random thoughts you have, and then mm. I can like stitch them all together. And like make that a segment on the show, just be like random thoughts with Chris Morris, Morris, the Couch Potato Diaries. <laughs> yes, yeah, just, oh, just a oh, manifesto. I, can ma- I can make a, uh, I can create you a separate category in the Discord, yeah, and call it "On the Road with Morrison," mm-hmm. and you can just post like all your different updates and photos and shit like that in yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard. It's kind of hard to when you're on the road because like you know I pay for unlimited 
through Verizon, but like coverage in the sticks is never great, even at the best of times. And no, so that's another thing. Like, you know, we stay at hotels all night, eat breakfast for free, and then do the job. And then if we get finished, then we go eat and then go to the next hotel. So it's like that's that's my schedule. Uh, I've the only TV I watched was old episodes of Bones that were on TBS. Bones, Bones, that, that was that's the, one. That's the only thing on TV I saw. <laughs> <laughs> like. I, like uh, if anybody has an experience being on the road in hotels, there's nothing there in the hotels. Uh, I will say I stayed in a bougie hotel in D.C., which was nice next to the National Stadium. Until you wanted to get um, until snacks. I wanted to get some food, and that was a fucking mistake. You can't get food in uh, D.C. unless you have I don't know a grand. <laughs> <laughs> like if it, I, I knew we was in a bad spot because when we parked the car vehicle and we were walking the block over to the hotel. I looked at the hotel. I'm like, oh, shit. This is like 400 plus a night. <laughs> Oof. Oof. And it's just like, like they, had, they wanted 15 bucks for a salad with like five pieces of shrimp on it. They wanted uh, 12 bucks for a ham sandwich. They wanted four bucks for a soda, three bucks for a bag of chips. I'm not talking about a big bag of chips either. No, so, you're talking about a little snack size. Yeah, I'm talking about the snack size. That for four bucks, I could buy the whole bag. Yeah. yeah so like, I'm just like, yep. I bet they don't have continental breakfast either. <laughs> they say got that kind of jam. <laughs> you sons of bitches. And that's one thing I kind of loved about being on the road is it's like sleeping in a new bed, mm. being in a clean bathroom. I, I don't and, know though. Those you say clean bed, but do you really trust those hotel beds? I don't care. to be clean. I don't care. I, I just kind of accept the fact and don't think about no. it. Yeah, that's all I do. But like you know, you go in this continental breakfast every morning and it's just like oh i'm having waffles eggs biscuits gravy i'm having all this and then i'm taking like 14 things of fucking muffins and i'm, grind, I'm, I'm eating those on the road like, you know, it'll be those on the road oh every touring band does exactly what you and, just did yeah. and it's, it's, it's cool because you see all these people that are just like you on the road too like all these you know i'm doing traveling construction basically so you when I get up in the morning, I see other guys with their tools and shit. And it's like, yeah, you working too, huh? Yeah, that yeah, fucking sucks. <laughs> so where are you from? <laughs> yeah, yeah just, that's the crazy part about it is during the week at a hotel, you, all you see is like construction vehicles and maybe a couple 18 wheelers and that's about it. Yeah. But hey. yeah, it is funny seeing like how dead eyed the service industry is with hotel workers. I'm just like, cause I just, some of them have like these little a la carte things set up mm-hmm. at the cheaper hotels and it's always like do you want a three musketeers that'll be two dollars and it's just like that's cheaper than gas station so it's like, <laughs> yeah i guess i want it. it's just like uh do you want to put it on the room no i can't do that because it's on the company so oh, can yeah. i just pay cash we don't take cash i'm just like really fuck y'all then and i just chuck it back in. So like, <laughs> i guess i'm going to the gas station <laughs> god damn it <laughs> yeah i've run into that before too where they will not run it on a card or take cash they have to put it on the room and i'm like what if the person paying for the room isn't the one consuming this product yeah so like we the company's paying for everything so. yeah which is at least a benefit but yeah I, I, I would imagine being on the road for that long is a bit but grating yeah, but going on the you know, doing all that and then eating out every day adds up oh I bet like a cool hundred dollars a week <laughs> go, disappears like it's nothing for oh meals. absolutely which so, I mean that's still not too bad eat all week on a yeah. hundred bucks that's well, not bad we don't bad. eat lunch yeah <laughs> so keep that in mind we're, we're one of those uh, good old dependable employees who eat breakfast before work and eat after work <laughs> so the sooner we get done the sooner we can finish this bullshit I, I mean built in self motivation yeah can't um, really hate it no different than like fat. Uh, no different than like the restaurant industry where you you can have a snack when you go smoke <laughs> yeah <laughs> what'd you have for lunch Bill a uh, pack of sp- pack of Winston's uh, <laughs> fucking Dr. Pepper <laughs> Just like I had yesterday and the week before and the week before that. Yep. <laughs> but no, uh, last week, uh, a couple random things hit the news, but it's kind of out of date now. But, of course, things happen every single damn week. So don't you think we're not going to have a news segment? Yes, let's go ahead and just at least talk about a few things that happened last week. Uh, one of the things was the Super Bowl. Uh, Chris, you were actually at a Super Bowl party. Yeah, I didn't watch a single fucking down. <laughs> we'll see, and that was the thing. That's like the first Super Bowl I haven't watched in a very long time. Well, see, in the back of my head, I'm sitting here going, I'm like, okay, cool. He, 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 We weren't here in order to record an episode, but if he's not traveling all week, maybe we could get together on like Monday night or Tuesday night, and we could like do a quick episode because there was a bunch of Super Bowl commercials mm-hmm. that came out, and I was like, we could just do almost like a Super Bowl commercial episode and just talk about the random funny ones or the crazy ones, shit like that. Nope. 
talk to you today and you're like yeah i didn't watch any of that <laughs> yeah, so my dad my, my dad does poker nights for the super bowl all the time and um my back is always facing the tv so like i didn't bother to turn around because i didn't give a shit i don't give a fuck about the eagles i don't give a fuck about the chiefs so and i didn't care about the halftime show i didn't even know where the super bowl was being held so like i had no i had no interest in the season of football this year uh, i had saw the cowboys that went so far yeah um, that's as far as they went so <laughs> well see and here's the thing even throughout all this and don't tell me but i've been able to not see who won the super bowl yeah, it's the Chiefs. I will say, I just said, don't tell me, motherfucker. Right. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And see, Chris, this is why I can't trust you with secrets. I just matter. said, don't say, matter. and then you matter. just told me. It doesn't matter. So, like, <laughs> I know, but I was using it as a semi like thing of like how disconnected I can be from that world of like a week later, two weeks later now, hmm. or no, a solid week later. I still don't know who won the Super Bowl. So yeah, thanks, Chris. You're thanks. welcome. Thanks. You're thanks welcome. For you that, need to stay in the zeitgeist of the sports world. No, I don't. You do. You do. You use sports terms every now and then, and I'm just like, you don't even watch it's basketball. It's part of the American lexicon and language so of slang. Sports. It doesn't mean I have to like it. Yeah. <laughs> Keep and playing your guitar. I will, god damn it. Uh, but during the Super Bowl, uh, we won't talk about all the random-ass crazy commercials. Uh, probably the two main ones that stand out when it came to that was uh, we got a Super Mario little teaser, and mm-hmm. it was a throwback to the original Super Mario Super Show yeah. from the 80s cartoon. They kind of remixed it, changed the lyrics, and it was just mm-hmm. a plumbing commercial for the Mario Brothers plumbing in New York. Pretty damn cute. The the ones that were kind of out of place from what i understand was uh he gets us commercial which is actually a pro like christian really? jesus commercial i missed that and it was one. like tw- they spent like 20 million dollars to basically say jesus exists and it's just like that's the best that, that way you could spend 20 billion dollars as a wow. christian organization for a 20 30 second commercial that says hey jesus is cool and it is like, hey fellow children hello fellow christians you like money <laughs> remember all that money we took in for jesus let's let's what's our best use for it a 30 second ad on the super bowl of course yeah. and then scientology has their commercial which they did a weird one last year mm-hmm. and i'm just like because they hit it like they hid the message it's like a weird pepsi commercial where they just hide it right. until the very end and so caitlin one of the jenners pops a fucking pepsi and stops <laughs> oh yeah riots. the stop war yeah, or yeah, whatever but stop writing yeah, yeah, um, yeah but yeah that's that's that was just like is that where we're at now or just religious commercials like you're just selling a brand <laughs> well i missed this one of course i didn't watch the super bowl when it happened so of course i missed it when it aired but this one didn't even come across my timeline until a few days after the fact but tubi had the best commercial hmm. so the commercial starts off by it coming back from a commercial break yeah and it's the announcers being like welcome back and we're here at the yada yada blah blah and then the smart TV menu pops up over top yeah. and starts clicking away mm-hmm. and it's just it's a 10 second ad but it like clicks away and goes to like Mr. and Mrs. Smith or some shit <laughs> and, and like you read the comments on the video being like this started so many fights in our house of who had the remote control and who was changing the yeah. channel <laughs> uh, another another thing about that is uh, I was on Reddit and uh, that popped up Oh, so, that the Tubi one. Well, a, a thing about the commercial, and it's basically how a marriage just deconstructed immediately when that commercial happened. This lady get did an AMA, and she said that commercial came on, and it, they weren't married, but uh, it was her living. They were living together for a yeah. year. Uh, her boyfriend lost his shit and started yelling at her and punched a wall and so she gathered her stuff during the halftime commercial and abandoned her abandoned him because smartest move she ever she's, fucking and made she's like he had never shown anger issues ever and all this and she kept like it was a whole thread on reddit and yeah. i was reading the thread and i'm just like i'm not commenting i'm just reading and it's just like all these people are like you need to get the fuck out of that house <laughs> yeah and i'm just like god damn i'm just imagining all the other ones that just went south because of that commercial that's no different than the people that do the commercial that says alexa please answer or siri this yeah, yeah. it's just like did you just order a 50 pound bag of lube 
<laughs> you fucking commercial. <laughs> Some YouTubers used to do that, yeah. like a uh, Game Grumps, uh, mm-hmm. when the whole Xbox, yeah, uh, Xbox off. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah they, 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 they would like God, Game Grumps. They would be like, you know, oh man, this part is just really hard. Hey, Xbox off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're like, ha ha ha. <laughs> but uh, one of the better ones, uh, though, I also showed him right before the uh, beginning was Workday. Yes. Had a commercial uh, featuring and they Paul hit, St- And they hit it. Yes. They, they hit the Workday thing. Yeah, it's until the very end, but it featured uh, Paul Stanley, Billy Idol, Ozzy Osbourne, uh, Joan Jett, mm-hmm. and uh, another guitarist that I can't remember his name right off, uh, he's, but he was one of the newer ones, but really damn good guitar, at least by his little demo in the commercial. Yeah. And the whole hook of it was, hey, corporate types, would you quit calling each other rock stars? Unless you are a rock star, don't use that word. Yeah, that's our word. <laughs> that is basically, but it, but just different moments of like Ozzy sitting in mm. cubicles being like, hi, I'm my all, name's Oswald. Oswald. <laughs> During an HR meeting, a guy's about to be like, you are a rock star. Paul like busts in, about to like deck him, and he's all slowly backs back out yeah. of the door. Yeah, it's funny, it's like I had to download the Workday app for Panera, and I, I'm just like, this is like the umpteenth fucking one because last year there was a Salesforce commercial and I used Salesforce in my job and I'm just like and then the, the Power Home commercial came on right after that. Oh god. And I'm just like two things I deal with at work are now like seeping in to my Sunday and I don't fucking like it. <laughs> and I'm just like stop. stop. I'll, you guys just stop. It's, a, it's an app for my W two really. Yeah. That's all it is. <laughs> really That's yeah. all it is. Uh, but no, I liked how when I was playing you the workday one, you you were in it. You're like, oh, this is pretty funny. At the very end, you're like, it's fucking workday. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that, that, that is pretty good. And the 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 DC commercial actually looked good. Yes. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into the two that are still going to be topical uh, because an Ant Man trailer also came out, but I already saw that movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully, Chris will watch it tonight. I'll force him to watch it. Be like, you go to a theater tonight, motherfucker, and watch no, that. So, so next week we can talk about it. We got to be able to talk about it while it's fresh. <laughs> or it's fresh, goddammit. We like fresh brotato chips, not stale brotato chips. <laughs> but no, um, I saw Ant Man. I thoroughly enjoyed it, though. But we'll talk about that later. Um, the other trailers, though, was, yeah, like you brought up, DC's The Flash. Uh, mm-hmm. We finally got a new trailer for it. Uh, I think it's the second main trailer we've gotten. Uh, the first one kind of teased the return of Michael Keaton, Batman. Mm-hmm. But in this one, we get him in his full glory saying, yes, I am Batman. Yeah. <laughs> Which I hope that's a trailer cut because that's cool for a trailer. Mm-hmm. That's what the fans want. It's like, yes. I am Batman. Mm-hmm. That's not going to work in the movie. That's going to be a little stilted if it's in the yeah. movie. Like, imagine if someone's never seen the original Keaton mm-hmm. movies and they see that and it's like, why is Batman introducing himself like that? It's kind of fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> now, they, they're doing a really weird version of Flashpoint. They yeah, are. Because Flashpoint, if you were to do Flashpoint, would be rated R uh, extremely. Like, uh, watching the animated version of Flashpoint and reading it on the comics is like, yeah, that's rated R. I can't have Wonder Woman killing the kids of shazam that's what she does she de- she decapitates shazam like that's what she does and she kills uh aquaman's wife <laughs> the same fucking way so you can't have that in a movie no so they they kind of they kind of change it up a little bit we get a car Zor-El character who's going to be the um super girl super mm-hmm. um we get the two berries uh which isn't part of flashpoint it's always just the one um and yeah, it's basically just him fucking things up. Yeah. Uh, f- and I think that's how James Gunn's really going to be doing the rest of the DCEU. Yeah. Because uh, he had no involvement in this film, though. Yeah, but I think that, that'll be the stepping point for where he can come in and say, like, see how he fucked up time? See how he fucked up the multiverse? Yeah, that's what we're going to do for the, the DC inter- you know, EU. And I think that'll be great for the MCU kind of kind of creates a little bit more competitiveness you know your pepsi and coke kind of situation because you know the mcu being so big and vast and popular kind of just kicked dc down a yeah, notch and, big time. and they had focused on television shows which had great acclaim great great reviews and except what, for one <laughs> yeah but like they, it's starting to die off now because they became oversaturated and so now you got these like little suicide squad movies or these animated shows and stuff like that that are kind of peering in or out and they don't they're not going to come up to against some like ant-man you know that just came out 
they for a whole year they could show that show it couldn't make as much revenue as this one movie on opening weekend so right now you really got to invest and that's i think that's probably the best idea they had when they got james gunn involved and Mm -hmm. kind of he was out of his kind of claws when it came to not compete and even then would you really want to tell one a a great director hey don't go over there and direct movies for them no you want that competitiveness because it you know thrives the whole fucking genre absolutely and that and that's another thing about the genre of superhero movies is i just love these film critique assholes on youtube it's just like they're not real movies you know they're not you know that good they're, they're no you know Scorsese. it's not real it's not real cinema yeah it's not scorsese it's like scorsese you made a movie called taxi driver which was fucking dumb as shit shut the fuck up <laughs> okay like you're it's okay to have a superhero movie on par it's just like they're, they're not going to win the big awards because it's all rigged for fuckheads like you so just shut the fuck up you're still going to get an oscar yeah, exactly you're it's still going to get the acclaim yeah you're not gonna see the departed versus superman returns you know it's just like nah nah i think the departed won that one <laughs> <laughs> the fucking departed <laughs> but the movie looks really good um i, I it's been speculated for a long time that this was going to be a Flashpoint movie. Yeah. And I remember uh, even a few weeks ago when we were discussing discussing the whole Ezra Miller and Henry Cavill mm-hmm. in and out scenario, I was even speculating then that they could use this movie to replace Ezra Miller as mm-hmm. the Flash. Just an easy way to kind of get him out of the picture. But it really doesn't seem like they're going to go with that, which is kind of surprising because it does feel like as you were mentioning, that this is going to be an easy way for James Gunn to kind of pick up and mm-hmm. cherry pick what he wants to keep and what he wants to get rid of by using this movie as the yeah. reference point. Because even though he hasn't had a hand in the movie, I'm sure he does have final say over maybe the final release yeah. and how it should be cut and how it should be presented. I think it's more like a time will tell what's going on with the that piece of shit. Yeah. yeah uh, <laughs> because I, I, cause that that's the one thing is like, because my girl and I watched the trailer for it that night after it came out and she was like so Ezra Miller is still in the movie and I'm like yeah but it's fucked up because I kind of still want to see the movie but at the same time I don't want to like spend money to watch the movie and that's kind of like the bad duality of it all. I hate watching it and touring it. (laughs) Oh yeah, yeah. I was going to say, well I hate watch the fuck out of Elma Mm. and (laughs) She-Hulk. And that's another thing about HBO. HBO has released a bunch of stuff recently um, for catalog movies. They're a little bit older, uh, but they've really picked up some of their stuff. And um, Well, uh, we've still got one more trailer to talk about. Yeah. Uh, We've got the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Again, I think this is the second... The saddening. Bro, I think this is like the second or third trailer we've gotten for it, and each time I get like more fearful. I'm like, good God, this is gonna be like punch you in the gut movie I the think entire we're lose, time. I think other than other than probably Rocket and Drax, I think we'll probably lose another character too. Really? Because yeah. I because those are the main two. I'm I'm just like I know I have a deep in my soul feeling that Rocket and Drax are both gonna go. Yeah, uh, I have a feeling that the guy that took over for Yondu will die. Um, yeah, Craglin. Craglin, but um, you know the comic relief slapstick character. Uh, I think he'll go. I think we're going to see um, some other some other character uh, just out of the blue get knocked out very quickly. Kind of just kind of lay the groundwork of what kind of movie you're watching. I mean this this is a long shot, but I wouldn't say it would be out of James Gunn's idea box to do. And the main reason being is your immediate gut reaction would be like, no. But at the same time, it's like, where else could the character go? Yeah. I think Star-Lord's going to die. I think they'll upgrade him a little bit. I think they'll change him up a little bit. Uh, I don't no, know. I think he's going to be gone because think about it. After this movie, aside from a little bit of comical relief and just a leader of a group, what does he bring to the table? Other than... Other than like comedic relief, nothing. Exactly. But I think that's that that's strong enough for, for him to keep because he's got brand recognition just for the just for the just for the guardians themselves. He's going to be the mainstay. 
because Chris Wimsworth is now not a part of that anymore. Now he's part of the Thor thing again. You know, yeah, right, right. Avengers. So they've already removed one Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, their, their trifecta of Chris's is well, strong. Well, they've talked about this being the final Guardians movie. Oh, yeah. There's going to be a so, lot of consolidation. Yeah. So I think if they're saying this is the final Guardians movie, I think what makes it this version of the Guardians is Peter Quill. Yeah. If this is the final Guardians movie, they got to get rid of Peter. No, I don't think so. I don't think that's the, I don't think I don't think that's the path they're going to go down. Now, if you're going to write it, yeah, probably, but we're going to need them later for like the Secret Wars bullshit. Okay, well then maybe they could they could pull a he's gone, but is he truly gone? Like a Shane. Yeah, there you go. Like yeah. like we we see him like vanish in a flash mm. of light to yeah. save the rest of the crew and we genuinely don't see him the rest of the movie mm. so he but so he's kind of presumed dead by the other characters yeah. and that's where they just kind of leave the movie which would for what you said open up an opportunity for him to come back force the secret wars of the Kang dynasty yeah. you know kind which of is going to be probably the most confusing fucking thing um, what the King Dynasty? Well, all of it. Like it's, it's going to be so fucking confused because it's going to be so oversaturated with characters. Like Avengers Endgame had so many Marvel characters. I think this will tower above because it's a two movie set, just like Infinity War, and mm-hmm. it's going to be played with another two movie set with the King Dynasty bullshit. The multiverse storyline, no matter what comic series you're dealing with or propriety, is going to be hard to tell in live action. And then just get making everybody just show the fuck up. Because we're, we could assume that they've already started filming a lot of this stuff. Because, God forbid, one of them die in real <laughs> yeah. life. you know, Because that's the bad, bad thing. When you have a 160-character arc uh, of storytelling, you need all 160 to stay alive through 2023. 20- 40 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like it, it you need these motherfuckers to stay alive and that's not a guarantee yeah <laughs> so this, uh, thunderbolt ross is a perfect example you know that i was we're just to, about to bring that up we're going to, have to multiverse the fuck out of that one yep. so, <laughs> we got harrison ford now fuck it why not and he's got a he's got a movie coming out indiana jones they uh they and guess what it's not uh refurbished material it's old material that's been brought back so it's all yeah. like instead of doing the ai kurt douglas it's the ai it's not even ai it's it's like hey this is old harrison ford from other movies right so yeah they're going to do that but indiana jones is a stupid fucking franchise <laughs> i never cared for it i pissed someone we know slap off one time because he opened the door he's like hey man i got a question for you what do you what's the best indiana jones i'm like crystal skull and he flew out that fucking door he's like, i'll kill you <laughs> 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 all messed out, all messed out. <laughs> son of a bitch <laughs> but uh yeah i don't know that that's at least my prediction though yeah. well, well i'll throw down every every youtuber is wrong every podcaster is wrong so mm. i'm gonna throw down my gauntlet and be wrong and i, I think peter quill is either going to i think the quarter house is going to show up yeah <laughs> i think he's going to either legit die or the movie's going to end at a place where the characters in the film and in the universe believe he's gone i think we're going to see uh Probably toward the tail end um, that they're not going to show in the trailer. That's probably uh, Nova, mm-hmm. someone from the Nova Corps, uh, the last last one. Or my hope is a continuation of the Eternals storyline. Like maybe, hey, one of maybe Black Knight shows up. Maybe Blade. We get a, you know something to stack on what's coming. So because that's that's something uh, another problem I have with this new phase is we're not getting we're not getting enough you know backstory on these new characters where in phase one and two we had whole movies about our mainstay characters we're just right. not getting enough backstory and I, and and you said you said you watched ant-man and, yes and i haven't watched it yet but I felt like that that would probably be a strong pillar for the new phase anyway. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and move on to that. Um, no spoilers, um, especially for any of the listeners at home, everything else. A broad stroke review for Ant-Man. Uh, exactly what you said. This is a very strong opening of the book. Mm-hmm. Looking back at Phase 4 now... I feel like Phase 4 is going to be remembered the same way Phase 2 was. Because Phase 2 was kind of slow... Not a lot of the movies were tremendous hits, especially in the moment. With time, they've been more favorable. But in the moment, a lot of the Phase 2 really didn't hit well. Phase 2 actually had 
the biggest problem because DC was still kicking out good product. You know, right. Batman Rises, you know, that came out, and it's just like. But I mean, even outside of that, just put Marvel in a bubble. Those films just weren't doing as well uh, critically, mm-hmm. and I feel that Phase Four is going to be kind of looked at the same way, where there's a couple redeeming movies like the Spider-Man movie. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people really did like Doctor Strange, but Thor kind of fell a little flat. You know the. Um, the TV shows they were doing on Disney Plus was very hit or miss, even between episodes, even on good series. So, with Ant Man, this is the first time I felt any sort of Avengers level excitement or like stakes to something mm-hmm. because Kang gets fully fleshed out in this film. Mm-hmm. Um, he is a genuine threat. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say that the most important thing for people to brush up on before seeing the movie, if they haven't yet, is uh, the Loki series. Yeah, The Loki series plays a lot bigger role in this than you would imagine, uh, especially the post credit scene. Uh, you don't get any sort of major cameos. That's not what I'm hinting at. Um, but a lot of what happens in that film gets re-explained through dialogue yeah. because the Conqueror Kang, who we see in this film, at one point gives a monologue explaining how he went through the broken universes and wiped them the fuck out. And you see the same visuals that you did in Loki of the timeline circle branching off. Mm. You see those branches all of a sudden turn into stardust Mm. and shit like that. So it's like a lot of the Loki stuff gets pulled into this film. And it's very good. Um, Is it a perfect one? No. And there was a few moments where you're just like, you got to pay attention because it moved pretty fast. Like at one point, Rachel kind of leaned over and she's like, this movie's kind of a mess because they were kind of jumping around a lot in the first act. It's one of those movies you got to watch twice. Yes, and by, but by the time the second act rolls around, it all kind of levels out. It just there was a lot that had to happen to get everyone from point A to point B, so the real story could start. Mm-hmm. That part a little messy. Main bulk of the movie really enjoyable. I, out of five, I'd say it's a solid three and a half. Kind of in like the a middle. Five out of seven. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really solid kind mm. of middle of the road at no point did i groan but at no point was i like leaning forward in my seat going oh fuck oh fuck oh fuck just very enjoyable and kind of put them on the right path again and you'll like modok i remember when we were discussing the trailer and everything and you're mm. like and i wanted this from modok you're gonna like Modoc. <laughs> it, it winds up being what you want it to be trust um, me the trailers were a little deceiving yeah um uh, yeah, I'm excited to see. I don't know when I'm going to go see it. I only have 48 hours off a week. Yeah. So <laughs> honestly, though, man, and I like, sleep through 16 of them. So well, I was going to say if there's one of the days where y'all wrap up a little early on the job site, look up a theater around you know. there. That might even be a good unwind. It, this one would be more worth your time, I would say, than the Doctor Strange and uh, Thor movies. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a lot of stuff I wanted to see, um, but like I said, you know, time. Um, no, I totally get it, and. Um, if not, if not, if not, then we probably next weekend. Word. No, it, it, I'm still waiting for Megan to come out. On <laughs> no, that was I, Peacock. It'll be streaming on pre, uh, Peacock in March. God damn! I still. I'm getting tired of all these new streaming services. They can all burn t- in hell. I am too, especially because like Peacock is the only one that like you don't have. I don't have. None of our friends have Peacock. Cap needs to get Peacock. <laughs> Cap, Cap, if you're listening to this, I don't think Cap has a streaming service, does he? No, he's a leech. He he yep. uses everyone else's services. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I ain't got well, Disney Plus. Uh, I've got Disney Plus. Well, I guess I got Disney Plus. <laughs> 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 Love you, buddy. Uh, but no, um, I think the only other bigger news that kind of happened over the last few weeks uh, that I kind of just kept putting on the back burner uh, for episodes like this mm. is uh, Super Mario World is now open and available for visiting in Universal Studios. I heard about that. And and I think the only one that's open right now is the one in California. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one in Florida should be opening within the next year or two. And early reviews are, it's fun. It's not exciting, but for Mega Mario fans, they're like, it's worth at least a trip. The The ride they've got is kind of like a Mario Kart ride mm-hmm. with like AR goggles on, so you can kind of look around and shoot shells at other characters. 
they said that there's no way to really give a true review without just writing it because camera footage looks so boring because mm-hmm. you can't see the AR goggles. Yeah. That a lot of the immersiveness comes from the goggles and the enjoyment of it all. So looking at videos online, it seems kind of boring to ride the ride, but I'd still be willing to I give it a shot. I still want to see South Park land. Oh my God. Well, we might just go to fucking South Park. Yeah. <laughs> if you go to go South to, Park, Colorado, they actually have a tiny town yeah. of... Yeah, that's in Denver. Yep. Yeah. Uh, south of Denver. Um, and that's probably the only reason I go to Denver, that, to look at the airport. <laughs> film a cryptic conspiracy cult video special yes yeah, the Denver airport will be another episode on the cryptic conspiracy cult it's shaped Add like a swastika the list. yeah it's shaped like a swastika and has a FEMA camp under it <laughs> <laughs> tune into that one yeah we, we are getting cryptic conspiracy cult back up and running season 2 we'll just season. call it season 2 yeah. <laughs> that's going to be getting up and running again real soon though um, but yeah the um, the, the the rides and everything that looks kind of cool. The thing that looks the most enjoyable though at Super Mario Land is the food. Yeah, the food looks really fucking cool. Like there's like a uh, toadstool mushroom mm. like rice ball things. Yeah. Um, Princess Peach like pink shakes and shit yeah. like that. Like all the food is really themed and well crafted. So that seems enjoyable. And and the walk around like all the visuals. It's very immersive. Like yeah. you walk through pipes to get into places. You know, there's big mountains with Goombas running around stuff like that so the actual environment is really well crafted so if I had just that random disposable income to be like let's go to California spend all the money to get into Universal Studios to be able to visit Mario Land $3,000 later yes that was a fun afternoon once I have that kind of money I'm sure I'll go <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck you fuck you money yes fuck you money. Uh, I've been doing a rabbit hole of Legos so like I'm just like I saw the Bowser uh, Lego set and it's a giant Bowser that moves oh that's so, cool so uh, it, it was actually supposed to be paired with the cube that, uh, that we put together um, and now I just want to get like the little Mario thing that comes with it apparently yeah with the video screen on his yeah. face yeah that's that's the what I need to get because apparently it does something with all these Mario ones it does yeah and uh, either that or the fucking NES TV combo that thing is so I fucking showed my buddy, cool uh, i showed my buddy bc that he's like that's pretty fucking awesome does that i'm like he's asking about the tv i'm like oh no it's functioning like you turn it and he's like holy shit that's a ribbon like a ribbon and he's like oh yeah that's badass no that, that is seriously one of and the coolest another, lego that's, products that's another thing it's like you know just shy of 300 bucks it's just like oh For yeah some plastic but it's but it's good plastic yeah, it's really it fits fucking together. good plastic <laughs> it's, 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 even the typewriter just looks fucking awesome <laughs> like the little the fucking uh, Underwood 5 they had and it functions and it's just like the guy who does it is like so fucking coked out talking about it he's like it fucking works because <laughs> you can put paper in it there, there's, there's such a reverse bell curve in life of like you know enjoyment of legos goes up and like at least goes down and then your bottom bar is like age Mm -hmm. so it's like really fun really fun really fun then you just reach that age where you're like fuck legos these things are the dumbest things ever they're baby toys i don't want any of the fucking legos i don't want my friends seeing me play with legos and then eventually as age goes on it slowly starts ticking back up or like maybe in your mid-20s you're like yeah yeah Oh, yeah, kids, like, kids, kids actually have kind of cool Lego from, sets from, now. From 15 to 25, you don't give a fuck about Legos. Yeah. And then it's just like, I want Legos. Like, well, it's like, yeah, exactly around that time, you start like kind of like looking around, <laughs> you start looking at the kids' new sets, and you're like, wow, I wish they had had that when I was a kid. Then a year or so later, it kind of actually dawns on you. You're like, wait, sitting like a goddamn Happy Meal where someone's going to raise an eyebrow at me if I ask for it in the McDonald's parking lot in the drive through I'm a goddamn adult. I don't have to ask mom's permission to buy this Lego set. I'm buying me a fucking Lego set. Fast forward five years later, you're the weird Lego adult with fucking <laughs> strung about your entire house. Well, that's another thing about Legos. You know, it's, it's and it's I a mean hobby. the entire house. Yeah, yeah. If you have a Lego corner with like five or six sets, you're still cool. I'm talking about Lego adults where they have an entire room set up, and it's like they have the train, the skyscrapers, and it's like holy fuck. Fucking shit! There is at least five thousand dollars worth of Lego in this room. Did you not want to invest that in anything else? Well, that's their hobby. That's, I know. See, that's another thing. It's like Lego. Lego is recognized as a hobby. It's no different than people who collect records or other stupid shit. Like, 
<laughs> I don't collect anything. That's the that's Chris, that's why Chris I call says it stupid records shit. or any other stupid shit as he looks around the apartment yes. and all my stupid shit. <laughs> all your stupid shit. Because uh, I don't collect anything. Yeah. I don't I don't have time for a hobby, and it bothers me because I just collect other hobbies. <laughs> it's, it's like <laughs> like I have a small collection of this one thing. And I just like have this. Like I have a handful of records. You know, I have a handful of video games, books. I have a shit ton of because that that's what I do. I just but you do, but you don't really collect collect them no, anymore no no so like because i just don't read as much anymore so i'm not collecting that shit anymore and it's like legos is that perfect item that you can put together one set put it on a shelf and just like kind of like need it and there it is the people you're talking about with the five thousand ten thousand dollars are masters <laughs> are lego masters uh the there's person, a whole tv show yeah, about yeah. it but like the one guy i saw the you've probably seen the same guy with the giant island table uh, yes. with the LEDs running around and it's a false bottom with the Legos and he got like, pick a panel up. He's like, oh yeah, put a little mechanism here for the train so you can switch track. It's just yeah, like, he's real big on imager and Reddit yeah, and stuff. Yeah, and that's but that's his hobby, you know. It could be worse. It could be like collecting guns and QAnon bullshit. So <laughs> I, I, if you if you collect Legos, good for you. <laughs> it's called war memorabilia. It's okay, Nazi not bullshit. Pro- no war memorabilia. <laughs> then where's the other people from the war? And why do you only have German shit? <laughs> <laughs> this is what interests me. It's weird. <laughs> Drink a Fanta and shut the fuck up, you weirdo. Go where your pumas. <laughs> yeah, uh, but like it's. it's it's a cool little hobby. Uh, it is. Uh, it's no different uh, from the ones, uh, the uh, the wooden mechanical sets that move the marbles around. Like, I thought about buying one of those because that's on my wish list. Uh, oh, yeah, those, like, those major mousetrap sets almost. Yeah, kind of like, uh, like a Rube Goldberg device. But yeah. it's like, uh, it's made of wood and it's and it constantly moves and you just crank it and it just like... And I was like, okay, I would want one of those to put in my bookshelf or something. Right. You know, or that reason to buy more shelving. <laughs> <laughs> When we move to our our, our, our our storage unit, we'll have plenty of room. All the shelves. All the shelves. It's only it's only like three hundred and fifty bucks a month. I could run LEDs, have a little record player, a little Victrola. A little Lego corner. Yeah, a little Lego corner. A little Lego man as a topper on the record player. Just DJ Lego. <laughs> well I'm there's, we don't really have too much of a main segment today, but I'm still going to go ahead and play the music because I think there's something that we've got something that we can riff on. <laughs> What I think we can riff on this week is something that we brought up, uh, I think, either during an episode or after an episode. Um, and there's no really use of like sitting here trying to create a big list. Let's just kind of shoot from the hip on this. Uh, you suggested tired, worn out, and bad TV and movie tropes. Yes. Did some of them that's just like, we just wish they would just go away. There's a, We've had enough movies with this plot line. Mm-hmm. We've had enough TV shows with this plot line. Let's just put it to rest. The first one that I can immediately think of is what I reference as the spy date, mm-hmm. where it's character A is so nervous about going on a date with character B, so character C goes, I've got the plan. Let, wear this earpiece, go on the date, and anytime you feel like you don't know what to say, I'm just going to tell you what to say. And then throughout the date, it just gets horribly misconstrued. These guys start saying the wrong thing because apparently once he puts his earpiece in, he loses all motor functions and brain function and can only say what he's hearing out of the earpiece. And the entire date goes to shit and, you know, cue uh, the canned laughter track as the guy comes around the corner. Bro, why didn't that happen? Ha! I am so sick of that. That story is literally 500 years old. Yeah. With the story of Marcuccio and Cyrano from Shakespeare. That's literally the storyline of that. (laughs) So if we've been telling that story for that long, I think we can put it to rest. We've seen enough character situations and enough variations Mm -hmm. of that story. We're good. Another one, uh, my favorite, It's all, and it's a holiday one. Christmas cures everything. Yes. It doesn't. It fucking doesn't. Um, if you live in a city and you're fucking uh, brainwashed by some plaid wearing asshole who says your life's better if you live out in the country, no, that's a cult. Okay? Santa and your vague believe in Jesus aren't going to pay the bills. 
if you decide to leave your fake job that doesn't really exist, your magazine job. We've talked about this before. Uh, like, but keep your job. You have a life. Do not shirk 11 months of the year for fucking two weeks in December. So yeah. <laughs> just, just, just don't fuck off and do that. <laughs> okay, don't do that. But the thing is, is, that seems to be the hook of almost every Christmas movie. That's though. the hook of every Hallmark Christmas movie. Yeah. We've had, uh, uh, our podcast of the Christmas time. Uh, is it a Hallmark movie? <laughs> yes, that's one of my favorite reoccurring games. I, oh. I, we try doing that every time we do a Christmas that's special. That's not a Hallmark. That's a porno. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys are in the mood of any uh, out-of-season Christmas, go check out uh, Something Good For You. Yeah. Link is in the description. And check out any of the Christmas episodes because uh, what I'll do is I'll pull together about uh, five or ten real Hallmark titles and pair it with about five or ten fake movie mm-hmm. titles and descriptions that I'll think up on the cuff and uh, try and get a round table see who can all guess what the real movies yeah. actually but were. like it's not even just Christmas movies it's any romantic comedy where we're, we're just setting someone out of place and you're just like I get it this is like some weird right wing film film like I get it because you hate cities and every character is so fucking toxic in those movies like the best friend calls up hey girl how you doing oh I I re I connected with this guy named Jonathan and he does this that and the other girl if you don't date him we aren't friends anymore you know who does this best in the movie uh uh, there's a movie on Hulu called Flesh, and it's a romantic comedy that goes south about 45 minutes in when you realize it's about a cannibal. And it's just like, you got to check this out because the toxic character you're talking about is legitimately verified. It says, I told you, you dumb bitch. Don't fucking go out with this dude. He's fucking, w-. he has no social media. He's a serial killer. And she's like, no, he's fine. And that's he's really good at eating me out. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> He literally, he cuts this girl's leg off. Like <laughs> he eats it. And like the winter soldier guy is the guy. Too. <laughs> it, 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 it oh, throws really? You, it throw, fucking Marvel people. Stop making other movies than Marvel. You're throwing me off. When I see Tom Holland kill Batman <laughs> in a movie, it <laughs> throws everything off. And I see the winter soldier hunt him down. <laughs> it's just, it, it really throws me out of the moment when I'm watching a movie. It's just like these Marvel characters are kicking each other's asses in other movies. <laughs> Don't mix. Don't mix. <laughs> But no, no me gusta. No me gusta. But like those, the, that the trope you're, you're talking about, the A, B, and C character yeah. is, is just done too much, and you could write a new story. Yes, without having been like a weird agenda on top of it. It's just like cities are bad, full of <laughs> sin. No Christmas, and it's just like Christmas is celebrated in the city more than anywhere else. So shut the fuck up. Yeah, we've got parades, motherfucker. We have giant trees. They literally deforest a place to fucking <laughs> put trees in our tiny little city. You, you you want to tell me that New York City does not celebrate Christmas with its weird ass tree? Yeah, that, like a palacena. that Marvel decides to burn down for an episode. Of, Fuck them. <laughs> Marvel will burn it down by accident for an episode of fucking Hawkeye. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that, that, that's just one that yeah. I just love the Christmas, the holiday special. The Christmas doesn't cure a goddamn thing. Uh, while we're thinking on Christmas ones. I guess this is one that can really ever be let go because it is very much in the spirit of Christmas. Mm -hmm. But a lot of animated shows do the whole um, A, B, and C have gone wrong. Mm -hmm. Uh, By this point in the episode, if it was a normal episode, at least A and B would have been fixed already. But we're reaching the end of like the third act and all everything is still fucked up. There's genuinely really no way out of it. And then all of a sudden everything just kind of becomes okay and then like the kid looks out the window and it's just like dad look and you see like this little trail with a light at the end of it and he's just like huh well i guess he may be real it's like come on that's such a cop out they're all trying to be christmas vacation as as quick as possible within like 30 minutes yes yeah it doesn't doesn't work (laughs) but But even christmas vacation didn't save it by an actual santa yeah but they're trying to all the problems become super escalated you know we've talked about it in christmas vacation clark we get it. You're having some bad times. Don't try to hang yourself with Christmas lights. <laughs> you don't need to one up anybody, dude. Yeah, it's okay, bro. Your 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 neighbor, that woman, 
is a Jew. <laughs> She's not celebrating Christmas. You don't need to one up her bass. <laughs> and, and also, caveat: I'm not talking about actual kids cartoons. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's going to happen. Come on, like, like The Simpsons and shit like that. The Simpsons, King of the Hill, Family mm-hmm. Guy. Mm-hmm. You know, sh- shit that's not actually demographically for you know single digit numbered kids. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, another one which is always kind of a favorite trope that's done horribly horribly wrong is the dangers of drinking episodes the very special episodes uh we've talked lo- we actually need a very special episode yeah. of the couch potatoes talking about very special yes, episodes but, uh, what it what that kind of threw me off was a drinking episode was uh there's an episode of family ties where uh tom hanks shows up uh if you know anything about family ties it starred michael j fox in his prime before he went shaky um uh and his uncle shows up and for some reason michael j fox looks up to this motherfucker even though he's not in the series at all but he just shows up well he's a drunk of course and tom hanks being a very slapstick character in his younger age plays it perfectly uh to the point where he's getting shit faced as soon as possible um and they're trying to help this man, but they're not acknowledging that he's an alcoholic. And then he backhands Michael J. Fox in one scene. It just slaps. Well, maybe his, that was the beginning of the problem. Yeah, but backhands him back to the future, right there to the couch, <laughs> and like, it's like, God damn, Tom Hanks bitch slapped fucking Michael. J. And you're watching it's like it doesn't make any sense, you know. And then he's like, Okay, fine, I'll get some help. And we, you never see him again. He never shows back up. And it's one of those weird things that happen in like happy days too. It's just like the character just disappeared, and we assume he died a horrible death, <laughs> kind of like uh, uh, Ron Howard's older brother in uh, yeah. Happy Days. He went to <laughs> Vietnam and never came back. Uh, he died. He died, folks. He died fighting the Vietnamese. Uh, but that that that's the drinking episodes are always just like that, or yeah. the mistakenly drugged episodes. Which well, I also kind of put that in there because uh, one of my favorites is Fresh Prince of Bel Air is when Carlton takes some fucking pills, which doesn't make sense in the entire series. That like Carlton. Carlton, a straight-laced, you know, logical, analytical man would just take some random drugs in his cousin's locker and just take them. He's not dumb. Now you make me think he's dumb. <laughs> Don't do that. That's called character assassination. Yeah, that is character assassination. <laughs> just blood all over the back seat. Just like, <laughs> pink mist right there. Uh, and it's just like, God damn, you are dumb. And then they proceeded to make him dumber later on in another special episode where he gets a gun. So like it's just like it's so stupid that I hate these episodes that are like that. Roseanne does it and they were able to make fun of it because they threaten the fuck out of the kid he's got the drugs and they make fun of the commercial this is your brain on drugs and she puts an egg on the table this is your brain and she takes a pan and smashes the egg that's your brains when you do dope in my house (laughs) and then two seconds later hey Roseanne that's your drugs he found your old drugs left in the garage from like 1975 (laughs) you dumb bitch (laughs) and as an asterisk no TV show gets weed right no no, even, it's always that '70s show. It's always like some reefer madness shit, and it's just like what got her close to that was actually the reefer madness episode from that '70s show, where she talks about the dangers of drugs. And Not the little hobo, and it's, <laughs> and it's fucking Kelso just gacked out because it looked like he just smoked meth, and he's doing this fucking bob and weave shit, and like you see Jackie and Fez, and it's just like and like poor Eric is just like the the victim. Yeah, he's just, all tied up to the chair. Yeah. No, Eric's not a victim. He's a facilitator. <laughs> He's worse than a drug dealer. <laughs> no, that was a very good episode. Though, but, but you're right. That probably is like the closest one. Just call so off in the corner, just yacked out the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like you know, they they all parody you know reefer madness. Yeah. And we've talked about that on the war on drugs episode. But that you're not going to take an axe and slaughter your family if you're high on eat. You're going to eat all the food. <laughs> like Mom a might dick. make mad at you. You're, you're going to be a dick. Yeah. <laughs> he, he ate all the eggs. <laughs> he, you you know, know how fucking expensive those things are now? Six dollars. Six dollars? It's 50 cents an egg. It's ridiculous. No but, me gusta. No me gusta. <laughs> I, have a, I have this weird uh, fanatical policy about every, everyone should own three chickens. Uh, <laughs> that's for another episode. Uh, how would you run the world? <laughs> uh, whole new episode of the Cox for everyone. Yeah. A gun in every hand and a Cocking every bush. <laughs> uh, 
but like it 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 the drugs thing like you said the marijuana is so outdone oh yeah but like well, because it's like because it's like what you said you either get like they hit one they, they take they ingest one marijuana and then after that they're like whacked out seeing colors heads are floating they're like visioning so like they just dropped acid or every character is like the burnout mm. Or it's like they just sit there all day and they're just like. <laughs> oh, it's like that. It's like a truth commercial. Oh, this is Sylvia, but now she smokes marijuana and she's like deflated on the couch. It's like I want to see. I want. I want to make her plug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I want what she's got. Yeah, yeah. I need some of that. <laughs> what, what the fuck she's smoking is the bee's knees. It's that item nine shit uh, we learned about. You just need first. to quit hating because he won't sell it to you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're you're a narc. That's why. And, it, and that's another thing too. It's like. I've only know I only know of one episode that kind of de- another show that kind of dealt with drugs, but this one uh, I don't know if you ever watched Saved by the Bell a lot, but um, no. they dealt with over the counter drugs that you could buy and fuck up on, and one was uh, Nyquil. No, one, uh, this one was caffeine supplements. Oh, and this girl kept she had to study. She's you know that overachieving character that we see in a lot of tropes of. It's like uh, the older daughter. Usually, it's a daughter who's you know doing extracurriculars ap classes has to stay up all the time has to study for sats and stuff trying to get in a good good school later on and like this girl she's fucking burning the candle at birth both ends because she's taking fucking caffeine supplements and she's getting pushed by the uh, uh the zach character from saved by the bell who also i will say if you've watched saved by the bell and just kind of imagine him as the devil he's the devil like zach morris is trash she is a piece of shit. the most toxic motherfucker in sitcom history is this motherfucker because he's a god he can stop time uh, <laughs> he can snap his fingers and stop time he pushes this girl to push herself even further to where she ods on caffeine pills and i'm not talking like from a shake from panera i'm talking about <laughs> i'm talking about straight up fucking caffeine pills and she's gacked the fuck out and she has a mental breakdown damn and it was just like holy shit you could do that with over the counter stuff yeah that's why most of them got banned yeah but it's just like you can still buy caffeine they're all <laughs> yeah well but not over the counter no more you gotta yeah, you go can buy caffeine pills over the counter yeah the ones that are like those rhino x pills no no you can buy caffeine supplement pills it's a supplement it's in the supplement aisle yeah yeah it's not the same no limit. no it's raw caffeine I, I, Chris, what I'm saying though is it's not the same stuff that they were selling back then though. That was no, like, she's taking a supplement, right? But she's taking, she's overdoing it. She's not going by the label because right. you only need to take one, yeah, like because <laughs> it's 800 fucking milligrams. <laughs> <laughs> you break it off and eat it twice a day. <laughs> you're, you're just like, and I'm good. <laughs> Keep this under your tongue and don't swallow it. <laughs> no, because that uh, that last job I worked at, I ended up falling into like a rabbit hole of mm-hmm. like the history of like those crazy ass supplements yeah. and shit. And yeah, just a lot of those older caffeine pills that were sold mm-hmm. over the counter were cut with like a lot of the other trilecladides and yeah. other like big ass words you can't see mm-hmm. pronounce anymore. All those shits got like recalls. So yeah, those supplements you're talking about. Yeah, you can get like just pure caffeine. Yeah, mm-hmm. we we sold uh, caffeine. We sold uh, creatine monohyde. You know, in just straight pill form. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you can fuck yourself up on that shit. But the things that she was ingesting would have like made your dick pop off yeah. <laughs> if guys but, were taking it. But she was taking, you know, she was taking this raw caffeine. But she was also taking, uh, you know, coffee. She was drinking other. Mm-hmm. She was drinking other supplement drinks. And by and, and you know, keep on this show was like the early '90s. Oh yeah. So, like, what they had was the worst thing they probably had was Jolt Cola. <laughs> so, so, this was crack cocaine. Yeah. So, this is the days before the word energy drink was legal. <laughs> no such thing as energy drink, <laughs> it's Coke. <laughs> well, I'd say uh, one of my other overused tropes is the, the parents leave for X amount of time. And the kids just fuck it up. They fuck it up and then sure as shit, they get the phone call and they're like, hey sweetie, we're coming home early. We'll be home in an hour. And now they have to race against the clock to fix the house and it's always miraculously fixed right as the parents are walking in the door and then every so often you'll get the variance of like everything seems fine and then like they'll open say uh, the closet to put their coat up and then all of a sudden 
of trash. <laughs> yeah, everything falls out. And they're like, oh, no. And then credits. You know, it's just resolved <laughs> yeah, by the next episode. That, exactly. And that's the great thing about binge watching television. Old shows aren't meant to be binge watched no. because it doesn't make any goddamn sense. And Why is it not the next episode beginning with his getting his ass beat? <laughs> like immediately. <laughs> and it's like, I can't think of them using, well, also because I don't watch just a lot of standard television anymore, so I'm mm. a bit disconnected. But it feels like they don't use that quite as much. But I remember growing up, every fucking show had that yeah. trope, whether it be Full and, House had it, fucking Step by Step had it, Roseanne, uh, Home Animated Improve- shows, Home Improvement did it, um, Malcolm in the Middle, yeah, uh, but Malcolm in the Middle, they were all fucking degenerates. They deserve every bad thing that happened to them. Um, <laughs> but but they still use that as one yeah. of the plot points, yeah. though. It was Lois as a you slowly were catching her, and she's like running into all these small problems mm-hmm. on the way home, and it's the only reason they were able to get the house tidied up yeah. in time and all this other shit. Simpsons did it. Yeah, Simpsons, <laughs> Simpsons predicted it. Uh, like it. South Park did it, but then flipped it on its head <laughs> by not letting things mm-hmm. go right, and then Butters getting his ass beat from it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, Dad. <laughs> Bam! <Bam-bam. laughs> Hi, <Hey>, Dad. <laughs> So happy, so cheerful. Wham! <laughs> Slay the door. Butters! <laughs> hey, Dad! <laughs> Whack! I could, I could listen to that all. Hey, Dad, I got something to tell you. Bam! And, ah, I can really feel his balls on my fist. <laughs> this virtual reality is so fucking real. <laughs> oh, my God. But, like, another, another one uh, is always. The gun episode. Oh, God. The, 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 yes. the gun episode. Yes. Um, my favorite gun episode is Fresh Pits of Bel Air because he just goes and buys a gun. That's all he does. He doesn't use the gun. Will Smith gets shot. Yeah. But Carlton never goes out and plugs some motherfucker, you know, like he should have. But <laughs> Well, I think the disconnect with all these are because it seems like they always try to put in the gun episodes in comedy series well that's yeah then the sitcom they've got to make it too slapstick to be a serious kind of thing that or they do take it super serious and it's such a tone shift for the show mm. family matters like, ah. family matters did it the best way um urkel is almost shot and it's a very serious uh, roosevelt johnson he, <laughs> did i do that shut the fuck up <laughs> yeah 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 but well, roosevelt johnson the dad is just like you know we could have prevented this you know if we just saw what was happening we could have prevented this if we had that thing on me yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's the best episodes when you have to pull the gun you know, it's just like yeah did I do yeah. that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Urkel forever <laughs> Key and Peele do a great skit about that uh, the, 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 uh, the Urkel it's my show now <laughs> this, this show is about to be me and my family now it's goddamn Quantum Leap <laughs> um, but yeah the, the, the gun episodes are always a little a little niche and it's always, oh, I found some gun, you know, and that, that does happen. Like that, that, that's a real thing that happens. Kids find guns all the time uh, because pay, people who own guns, some of the people that own them, don't fucking take care of them. Don't leave them out for like someone under the under four foot tall can touch them. <laughs> don't don't do that. I love how there's a height restriction, yes. not an age restriction. Well, what if, if it's if, like if, a, if it's a tall kid? I'm showing them how to use a gun. <laughs> I was gonna say, what if it's like a really tall seven year old? Yeah. Big big people have big hands. <laughs> they can hold a gun. But what about a really short thirty year old? No, no. If you're under five foot tall, you shouldn't hold a gun. You are such a heightist. <laughs> yes, I am. If I look down at you, I am literally looking, looking down, down at, at you. you as a class system. Yeah, yeah. Like it is. I was gonna say that's why at least you semi respect me is you only have to look slightly down yeah, at yeah, me. Like, so like if, when we do the episode of if Chris was in charge, like. <laughs> like there's going to be a lot of weird things. I'm going to say it's going to get a little fascisty, a lot of liberal stuff, but a we're lot of fascisty ha- we're, stuff. We're only going to be able to post this on the Patreon. We're going to have to revive the Patreon just to post that episode. I bet people were subscribed. <laughs> <laughs> They'll pay that dollar. They'll pay a dollar. Do I it. want their dollar? Yes, I want their dollar. Give me closer You're to- like, what? what is this we? I want their dollar. I want their dollar. I want their dollar. I want, their, I want to buy sweatshirts. Put a dollar hats, in the box. <laughs> you got to say box. Uh, box. Uh, yeah, but like that's, that's just that's just how it is um another one is the dad is always dumb i was that was actually literally going to be my next one the horribly idiotic brain dead father yeah and it's like he's not brain dead he's and there's a subtle way to do it and the way they do it is wrong so like it's always the dad in most sitcoms before probably 1999 
The dad was working all the time. If you do see him, it's the weekend. And what are dads doing on the weekend? What the fuck do they want to do? Because yeah. it's their goddamn weekend. They've and, been up since yeah. fucking six o'clock, and they've been and then they fell back asleep at eleven, and they're yeah. right back up again. Yeah. So like when they get home, they're doing home shit. Like a great report is home improvement. Home improvement was literally Tim Allen coming home. At the end of the day, he had three boys, a wife, and a cool ass neighbor, and like he was just bullshit. And then he would fix stuff around the house, or he would do his hobby, which was building a new car. That was the cool thing I liked about the show. Hell, he's building a new car again. Yeah, and new season, a, new, new car. car. Yeah, new season, new car. And it's always fixtured around that. And that was the best show to do that. Like he's not an ignorant asshole, but when you got shows like Roseanne, where they treat the dad like a dumbass, where he doesn't know how to handle the situation oh shut up we've got this it's okay yeah it's just like oh what are you what are you gonna do and he's like you're not letting me be a parent and that's one thing i kind of hated about sitcoms with two parents it's you either have one parents that deceased like full house or you have two parents and one parent's kind of boxing the other one out yeah that is not how you should show a show about a parent about parents and you know parents what? don't box each other out uh another really good example of it being done right is uh when we just mentioned a minute ago malcolm in the middle yeah because Hal was portrayed to be a bit of a idiot you know he he had his kind of quirky dumb moments how how had a sensory problem uh, like he would start something and then start 40 things afterward yeah yeah that's what's his problem so it's like how was shown to not necessarily be the strongest father figure mm. on television but at no point was he shown to be brain dead idiot he was a speedwalker i mean he he still had a brain up there he may do some dumb things Mm -hmm. but the dumb thing was probably in spirit of trying to do something good for his family yeah so like how how from malcolm in the middle is the golden heart of that show he was scared of his children and rightfully he should be (laughs) his children are sociopaths all four of them we need to do a malcolm in the middle episode yeah yeah. they're all fucking crazy in a different we all have different versions of mental illness but like uh dewey especially dewey would have been a sociopath out the gate he would have been a great senator (laughs) maybe he would is in this uh, this, uh, universe yeah so like like remember the lego one where they're building and he's just like talking about ethnically cleansing the neighborhood to make room he's like he's just like i want to make room he's like but you just built that i need to make room (laughs) (laughs) yeah and it's just like that reminds me of the fucking meme it's just like welcome to the future old man and it's yes. always like I unplugged grandpa's life's machine to club up my game boy <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the future old man <laughs> but, the future's now <laughs> the future's now old man but like those, for those you know it works out great but a lot of your TV dads like Roosevelt Johnson from um, Family Matters Uncle Phil current Homer Simpson Homer, Homer Simpson you know they're treated as dumb people and Peter as, Griffin yeah but they're the linchpin of the family. They're making the money. They're, you know, and this doesn't have to say about gender roles or anything like that, but that's just how it's portrayed because these are American sitcoms and family, and, you know, family guy is the one that makes fun of the old way of doing things where it's single parent income with a, what, four bedroom house in fucking new, <laughs> was it a, a Rhode Island? Yeah. In a, rich ass northwest uh, northeast of america yeah no that that's expensive fucking living so yeah he lived in a two-story home <laughs> with a garage and a nice suburban neighborhood yeah and a talking dog so like his friend was a pilot a cop and whatever cleveland did uh, <laughs> i'm pretty sure cleveland was a millionaire just didn't tell anyone <laughs> makes uh, sense uh but yeah yeah so like you get these the bumbling dad yeah the bumbling dad is always a bad way of doing it they do it in a modern family which kind of sucked because they both worked mm-hmm. and it's just like that doesn't make sense why you're just dousing this fucking dude in gasoline and, and just blighting his ass on fire every week <laughs> and uh honestly one i didn't think that was going to be such an annoying trope until i started thinking about it throughout this week and even that 90s show did it and it was one of the things that you even kind of went eh, which made me think on it two people randomly meeting and then becoming the ultra best friends within five minutes no so even the recent one uh leia when she was creeping in looking at uh the neighbor and all of a sudden through that action within two minutes that person's invited leia into her room and she's telling her all about her life and you know all this other stuff yeah it's like no that's not 
Well, that's the great fiction of it, yeah. That's not how that goes. And no. there's so many stories that, like, series premieres, or, you know, they want to introduce a new character, you know, a couple seasons in, randomly run across each other, immediately become friends, and everyone's cool with each other, and they're just part of the friend group. Until I became an adult, my best friends were people I had fist fights with. <laughs> Like, I literally had a fist fight with these two guys, and they became my best friends growing up. And that was how that worked. Period. Make an episode about that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's period. Yeah, show me a guy who is going to school, gets in an argument with a dude, and they fight. And it's just them two knocking each other fucking down to the ground. And then later on, it's like, yeah, you want to burn one? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> and that's that's how Eric and fucking Hyde met. <laughs> yeah, as children, <laughs> as children, this is like Hyde probably beat the fuck out of Eric, or Eric probably cold cocked him one like a sucker punch. And now I don't know. Red would have brought that up as the one time he was proud of Eric. No, nah, because he would have known. Uh, <laughs> Hyde wouldn't have brought that shit up in front of Red. Eric would have bragged about it. No, he wouldn't have. Not to again, Red, not to Hyde, not about Hyde, his best friend, his brother. Not yet. Yeah, yeah, but Hyde's dead. <laughs> Hyde died in 1979. <laughs> that, that's now your narrative. <laughs> well, it's the only narrative now. <laughs> Fuck, what, you got one? Did they show one? No. <laughs> no, they didn't. So I have to assume in 1979, on uh, December 31st, he ceased to exist. <laughs> on his way back from the foreman's place, yeah, riding he, his motorcycle. Yeah, yeah. He was going upstairs and never came back down them stairs. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it's, it's like, just, like, just like Ron Howard's brother. <laughs> it's just like, God damn. From Happy Days. They just went up the stairs and never came down. <laughs> I remember hearing about that. Oh, yeah, in Happy Days. No one ever brings that up. They yeah. have an older brother that just... And keep in mind, this is the early 60s, and Vietnam's going, yeah, why is Ron Howard in Vietnam? No, his brother's there. He, they didn't draft two kids from the same house. So <laughs> that's how that worked. That's how that worked. <laughs> so, yeah. There's a trope. <laughs> the, the, the draft. <laughs> we don't get that trope anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> Not since... Vietnam, <laughs> and uh, maybe another one that's a bit niche but already kind of overdone is the self-aware jumping the shark. Oh yeah, where it's like an episode is so outlandish, some character even brings up this is a jumping the shark moment where they kind of break the fourth wall and you it's get just meta like, with it. mm. yeah, I, I'm almost getting tired of the meta. Uh, that is a close second to my number one hated trope, the musical episodes. Really? Okay. No, I, I can see that. I but it's fucking t- hate musical episodes. I can't think of any of them immediately right off. But I Buffy feel like the Vampire Slayer. No, no, no. I was going to say, I couldn't think of the one immediately right off, but there is an episode or two of a show that did a musical episode that I liked. Mm-hmm. But I will agree with you. More times than not, that needs to see its way to the bed. Yeah, I, I can't stand a musical. If I want to watch a musical, I'll watch a musical. Period. That's just how it is. Uh, but you're really throwing it off about a show if you do a musical episode. Uh, it's right up there with like it's not. It's a situational comedy episodes, but n- not family base. More of like your Parks and Rec and stuff like that. Uh, your live episodes of stuff. 30 Rock did a live episode and it was like, what the fuck are you doing? I get it. You guys are good. You got a lot of SNL writers at the time. You know, you got Tina Fey who was like fucking SNL alumni. You got Alec Baldwin. You had all these guys who were really cranking out good stuff for the show. But then you decided to go live off the cuff and you told the editor to take a day off and it's like you better be fucking careful because they did that and it was awful <laughs> and like when i see live episodes it really fucks it up unless you got a tight group of people you know yeah. like the only time i've seen live episodes work well and it's not even a situation comedy it was in dimension 20 right like they did a whole fucking campaign live and it's just like what the fuck that's ballsy <laughs> <laughs> without editing yeah that's that's pretty good uh actually going back to the one you said right before that uh probably the most jarring musical episode i can think of mainly because the entire series was not comedy based and all of a sudden they do a musical episode where one of the side characters is stuck in the hospital Mm -hmm. and they give him like super strong drugs and then like everything from his perspective is a musical and it was rescue me yeah that was the most out of place weird episode it was i think um Proby, they had mm-hmm. one of the yeah. new. It was the new hire. He. Uh, it was a few episodes, seasons in. It was during the writer strike. Uh, I remember that specifically because I looked up why that episode happened. They're like, oh, that was part of the writer strike. I was like, makes sense. Um, 
Yeah, he, he gets all fucked up. He's in the hospital. They really dose his ass up with morphine. And every time it cuts to him, it's some... It is some fucking song every time. And it's just... Yeah, Rescue Me had some humorous moments, but it was never surrealist like that. The only time I liked it was with the boys with Kamiko is having a daydream, basically. Yeah, but that hospital. wasn't a musical yeah, episode. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's the only time it's fucking welcome. Yeah. It's like if you're just doing a one-off scene. Yes. You know, that's when it's welcome. But if you're doing the whole fucking episode like that, it's trash. Yes. Uh, and I... Uh, out of tropes, but, that is probably my most hated. But but some TV shows actually lend itself to doing that well. I will say Bob's Burgers mm-hmm. does that really well because they usually have such good quality songs in their episodes anyway that they've done a musical episode, and it was pretty good. The great thing about Bob's Burgers, it's heavily built on a combination of dry humor and puns. Yes. Uh, my favorite thing are the puns, especially in every episode, because I have a recipe book for season one, and it's all the puns of the burgers, you know. And it there's a recipe for these bugs. Like, uh, uh, I can't think of it because they're all very elaborate puns. Yeah. And, but, like, it's on the board. Hey, what's today's burger? Uh, uh, a street burger named Desire. <laughs> and it's yeah. just like, and it's like, Okay, that, that's pretty good. It, and then you get the recipe book, and it shows you, oh, it's fucking this, this. It's like, okay, I get it. It's, yeah. a, it's an Italian burger. <laughs> uh, but, you know, a, co- a cartoon show like Bob's Burgers, where the animation is flowy, not rigid, like uh, King of the Hill mm-hmm. uh, or anything like that, can work. Right. So, but when it comes to like live action sitcoms, where we just break the fourth wall and just start singing and dancing like a bunch of fucking hicks, like, or like people were in like a cult. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. And, and that's, that's King another of the one. Hill never had a musical. Episode. And that's another one. How cults are portrayed in television and movies is a weird fucking trope. They're automatically fucking David wearing. Yeah, they're already fucking uh, brainwashed. They're fucking knee deep in the shit. And I get it. You're trying to portray cults, which there's going to be a whole episode on how that's portrayed in TV and movies. But like that trope of them offhanding meeting a cult is batshit. Like there's no way a cult like that would just show themselves out in the open that quickly. Especially uh, my favorite is King of the Hill, the Janes. Yep. The jams and jellies. And it's just like, no, you wouldn't be outside the compound to begin with to talk to people like Hank. Yeah. Because Hank and Dale, Dale especially with his paranoia, would have been like, Hank, that's a cult. Because <laughs> he knows. I mean, the, that's what happened in the episode. Yeah, you know, he's like, uh, hey, is this the cult? He's like, we're not a cult. We're people of like-minded individuals. Yep. yep this is the. <laughs> <laughs> Drops it in the park. Let's get the fuck out. <laughs> Break out the grill. We're going to make these kids some ostrich meat. <laughs> and they're going to love it. <laughs> Hank Hill being a deprogrammer for cults is fantastic with his magic grill and ostrich meat. <laughs> <laughs> that needs to be an offshoot series. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hank Hill, the deprogrammer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but, yeah, and but, the thing is, is even King of the Hill, though. King of the Hill in their series did a whole lot of different tropes but it never felt overdone Mm -hmm. or out of place because okay uh season one had a really good trope which was the the husband just not understanding the wife Mm -hmm. turtle episode yep he is so rigid and against the idea of Peggy doing this song, being with you know someone of such liberal minded. Yeah, you know, she seems a little pro-choice there, Hank. You know, and him just not being welcome to it, and then at the end, kind of warming up. Oh, it's Betsy. Let me play the song on his guitar. This, that, and the other, and genuinely cheering her on at the end. That could have went so many different ways. Oh, if it was made now, it would go south very quickly. Yes. But even that, that's an overused trope, but they mm. seem to have done it well. It's because it's very subtle. There's, there's King of the Hill, like a handful of other shows we watched, the setup is so is long enough and practical to, to get where we need to be. So the whole A plot, even the sub B plot of Bobby taking fucking Ritalin is is all about the family. Bobby, 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 Bobby. But, but it's all about the setup yeah. for Hank and Peggy about being parents. Mm-hmm. Because technically, they are new parents. They are fairly new parents. They are people who, who for probably a decade, didn't have a child. 
who had a child later on in their marriage. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, they're raising a fucking teenager, too, with Luann, who's about to, you know, graduate high school, go to college and stuff like that. So they are thrown into the mix of it too hard. And so they had all this time to fuck and hunt, fuck around and be teenagers all for 10 years. And it's just like... They, they, Hank didn't even have to wear protection. No. No, he was raw dog and peggy every fucking episode. He, he didn't need to worry about that shit. They fucked every episode. I guarantee it. I guarantee fucking it. Even episodes where Hank wasn't around, they fucked. He found a way. He got, got on that Hank will always find a way. He got on Dale's cell phone, called the house up. Hey, pig. Hey, square pig. Has to send uh, John Redcorn out of the house. Yeah. <laughs> Hank. I will not heal your wives like I heal the wives of others. <laughs> Better not. And kick your ass. And he would have. Oh, he so would have. He would have. Because John Redcorn, for those who don't understand, listen to our podcast, is a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, We'll have to do another King uh, of the soon. We, we, we put it to bed for about two years. we got to bring something we back gotta bring on it. it. Back. Bring it back. Um, <laughs> but another trope that I don't like. So it's hospital this is basically hospital sitcoms uh you're not like scrubs scrubs kept it very comedic lighthearted, and then you had your more serious episodes about depression and stuff like that loss yeah that's fine but when you have a show like house where every episode is a rare disease like one in ten million shot you know of just like what the fuck and it's just like all in the same town really Really, you had the Black Plague and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma with AIDS attached, and like somehow you cured it. And the whole fucking time, no one's on the backdrop being like, "Hey, did you really cure that person of AIDS?" <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? How do you do? Like in the crime ones, don't get me started. I'll do a whole episode about crime television and how fucking stupid that shit is. Well, I was gonna say, I'm just tired of the overall trope of the. The even though Rescue Me did it really well, they're one of the few that did. The government organization, whether it be police, firemen, paramedic, insert thing here, the just the show based on that and like all the shittiness that goes on because it's like I, I remember um, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Oh my god. I, I, Every episode, it was the same shit. Oh, the cops are a little incompetent, and there's one that's just trying to keep the whole precinct together. And then you have your super serious boss that only speaks in, you know, the really... flat monotone voice. Yeah, flat monotone kind of humor. The black captain. Yes, and he's always got to be black. And, yeah. it's just, and, and that's... it's Again, it's like if you want to like look at something like that, it's like, really? It's a trope. It, it's a trope. The the flat voiced, you know, very serious black captain. It's like, does is that how it has to be? Yeah, it, it, I'm it, tired it, of it. It's a carryover from the '80s. Uh, a lot, a lot of that's a carryover from like Beverly Hills Cop mm-hmm. and Rush Hour and stuff like that. And that shit was funny. It's not funny when you reheat it in the yeah. microwave and put it on TV. <laughs> yeah. So like, another one is the will they, won't they stuff. Yeah. When you're writing the characters and like the. You were just like, oh, they have to be together. No, they don't. Yeah. They can just be people. Like, it's fine. Well, they mess it up uh, because I've never really watched this show, but uh, Rachel enjoyed it, and I'm actually starting to really like it, too, was uh, New Girl. Yeah. I never really watched that when it was airing, but she liked it, and we ran out of shows and that's, to rewatch. You know what's the great thing about it? It's unique. Yeah. It's just people living together in the same house, and it's the weird dynamic. You have yeah. one guy trying to fuck one girl's friend. You got the girl herself who, who doesn't fuck the other guys, and then you got the one guy who... Is basically an idiot, and then mm-hmm. you got the bat- former athlete who's trying to make it back in America. That's all it is. Yeah, and you're te- that's probably the most unique show in the last fifteen years. But even they ran into the will they won't yeah. they trope because um, Schmidt, one of the um, Schmidt r- r- roommates, and he's like almost kind of like a mix between Quagmire and um, shoot. I just had another one of the guys in my head, but but he's kind of like that borderline serial killer but ultimate ladies man oh Dennis Reynolds yeah, yeah he's, he's a combination of Dennis and Quagmire yeah <laughs> but he's also very awkward yes but like the, 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 I know what you're talking about but they have uh, the main girls has a friend named Cece yeah and the two of them hook up in like the second season mm-hmm. and you think okay cool well that's gonna work out for a while well in the point in which we're watching the series they're already broken up mm-hmm. and this entire season has been a big will they won't they mm-hmm. And it's, like, and it's like, we were even talking about that. It's just like, 
every episode just feels the same when it comes to his part of the storyline. It's always he falls in, you know, he starts falling for this other chick. Uh, they're, you know, fucking making out for weeks on end. Oh, she's not my girlfriend. She's not my girlfriend. Then he runs into CC and he like has this whole existential. Oh, yeah. I still miss her. I got to stop her wedding. I have to stop this. Yeah. And then like she gives him the time of day and he's just like, no, no, I don't want it. And then they're like on the outs again. Then two episodes later, he's trying to vie for her attention. It's just good, the better good version. God. The, better, the better version of that is uh, her, her, the new girl herself, and the other guy. Yes, because that is just like two fucking idiots fighting each other in a forest. Yes, because I just love because Schmidt has the best joke in like the whole season. She's like, he he, he asked her. He's like, oh, you saw it. She, he's like, tell me, tell me when, and he starts widening his. Yes, hands. yes, and I saw that like, episode. <laughs> and he's like, he just keeps going, just he's keeps going. He's like, let me start over. <laughs> and then she's not answering, but he's just like flabbergasted <laughs> it's because he keeps getting bigger. It's like, like two feet, but he's got his hands <laughs> far away. He's like, come on, come on, there's no way, really. Yeah. I'm going to keep going. But, just uh, tell me when. <laughs> but their little tropes are a little bit different because there's new tropes in that one yeah a lot of one of those new tropes is don't talk to the fucking landlord that's a new trope that's that's something that doesn't get brought up because all the shows we've seen they own their houses they're not going to be written the only person we get this close to is like Seinfeld yeah it's just like because you know we don't really see the landlord in Seinfeld we see his shitty neighbors <laughs> but we don't see the landlord but the landlord of New Girl is a fucking monster. Yeah. So are we on, doing this or not? <laughs> based on what they say. And she talks to him. It's just like, hey, this is the nicest guy in the world. He's like, why is there a weird painting of you, one of you in the closet? <laughs> <laughs> but, but I like his resolution where he's just like, oh, I thought we were having a three-way. Yeah. He's like, I've just never done this before. He's like taking his belt off. And she's like, no, 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 no. That's not what I, I, he's like we doing this or not (laughs) like you got a lot of new show a lot of other shows like uh schitt's creek um new girl and stuff like that who change the dynamic of who's in the cast uh because schitt's creek is just about a family who lost it all uh, Shit's Creek was actually probably one of my favorite series I've watched in a Shit's minute. Creek that is, was great. Shit's Creek is just people who've lost it all, who go out to the fucking country and try to make a life. The f- other show, a version of this, is Ozarks, where they sell drugs. <laughs> so like the, it's kind of like those two shows that have the same plot line, but they veer <laughs> totally opposite. <laughs> kind of like Breaking Bad in the fucking show called The Big C. Both were teachers. They both get cancer, and this is how they handle it. He makes industrial quantities of meth. She tries to leave a legacy behind for her children when she dies. (laughs) See? It's about loss. And it's just like... You guys flew the plane in two fucking different directions. And that's a prime example right there that you can even take a trope, which is you've gotten news that you're terminally ill you have x amount of time to live what are you going to do with that time that is an overused trope but then exactly what you said between those two shows they're able to break the trope and make it an interesting story so there are elements and there are ways to make these tropes interesting Mm. we I think it just falls back to probably the only time we have any sort of major criticism on a TV show or a movie Mm. is the bad writing yeah you know, it's like just take a little bit more time, think through your story, create something a little bit more captivating, and then maybe these bad tropes won't be bad tropes anymore. You're making it fresh again. You're making it new. Look at your shit's creaks, your um, uh, new girls, your breaking bads. Take that trope, flip it on its head, make it good again. Yeah. Uh, and another one about the another trope going on to the sickness part. Not so much terminally ill, but the scare of illness. Oh, or the whole episode you're worried about the main character or the important side character and their uh, Home Improvement did this with the middle child. Uh, he got a cancer scare. Uh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas's character. Um, and they play it up, and it's just like, are they going to kill off a kid? Like, when I was a kid who, who was in the hospital quite a bit, I was thinking, oh, shit, they're going to... Sh- Great. They're going to show what it's like to be fucking scared of your own health. Yeah. And I didn't see that growing up. And having to deal with that, that was nice to see. Yeah. And then it was just like, hey, they're like, hey, we can manage it. By the end of that, about five minutes left in the episode, they're like, hey, we got the call. You know, you take this medication every day. We can manage it. And 
it's not as bad as we thought it was. And as someone who was at 12 years old being told you wouldn't make it to 20, that was a good thing to see. Yeah. But when they started doing it in other shows, it got to be a problem. Because <laughs> some of this stuff's like, yeah, you're going to die. You should have died. Why didn't you die? Yeah. You should have died. You should have fucking died. It's like, really? Is this the message we're going to give? The cast of ER couldn't save your ass. Like, <laughs> they, 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 were, they were too busy fucking. Like, like, they, you were going to die. Like, what? You missed that episode of Scrubs? JD was worried about his girl and he forgot to double check your file. Yeah. And, and another, another one is the actor that must leave. Uh, oh, trope. the way to write him out. How do you write out Eric Foreman? Oh, he's in he's Africa. Moving. He's moving to Africa. That's okay. Okay, he went crazy. Okay, it's probably the lead in the water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He, yeah. It's fine. Yeah. It's you fine. always have to think of like. Well, it's kind of built into it where you kind of have to think of the most craziest, outrageous reason mm. because otherwise everyone's going to be sitting here going. Well, he could show up because he's only, you know, doing this small thing. So it has to be some sort of crazy. I'm moving to Africa, or you know, I'm I'm going to night school. You and know, like, something that's gonna make it to where the they show, genuinely can show, show up. In the show ER, to let a guy go, uh, they killed him with a falling helicopter. A helicopter uh, propeller hit the building. It ex- the engine exploded and fell on top of him. That was ER. That was a dramatic show. But that's just what I'm talking about. Like Damn. they killed him with a helicopter and they show it. They he like he sees it and he's like, Oh my god. <laughs> and just like just blood every blood and fire everywhere. And that, that's god how they, damn. But that's how they killed him. And you think about that with other shows where you have to write off a character. Uh or send away. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's, that's another part I hate. The sending away. They just oh, they just picked up everything and moved? Like you can just pick up all your shit and just move to Atlanta. <laughs> Who the fuck does that? I know. What the fuck kind of advice is that? <laughs> but that's but like, a weird life trope. That's a weird life trope. Uh, like I'm not just going to pick up all my shit and move to another state in another metropolitan area that doesn't have trees, <laughs> <laughs> where the rent is twice the amount here. Yeah. What the fuck? With no job prospects? No. Uh, <laughs> but you know, different strokes for different folks. But uh, like, it's a weird trope to do when you're trying to write off a character and that was a hard thing to do watching like that 70s show is like yeah he might not come back because he was getting big but you also have that kind of same thing with like john goodman who was getting big but they left him in the show uh, the worst part is to uh, for grace is like i'm sorry guys i have a huge movie career ahead of me do you i'm gonna be venom i'm gonna be part of the marvel movies this thing is gonna be the biggest thing ever i don't have time for your silly little cult tv show that you play on fox i have an important movie career to take advantage of cue the curb your enthusiasm Music. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just like, <laughs> where both shows or both uh, properties failed because that happened. <laughs> yeah, it's a crock of shit. Um, <laughs> but well, yeah, what's another? Uh, we'll round it off with one more trope. What's one more really bad movie or TV? The trope? racism card. Really? <laughs> I was gonna say the race against time. No, like the, the bombs episode. Yeah, you know, the, the the we got to salt. We have a time limit. Yeah, uh, shows that do this can do it very subtle. And uh, how I met your mother did this, but it was with the fuck. It wasn't really a race against time. It was a race against being told something very terrible. Right. Uh, there was an episode where the main one of the main characters' dad had died. Um, and he was like a very wholesome character and he's a very lovable character but in the background you saw the number 12 and then next scene the number 11 and then you saw a 10 and it slowly built it down to a 1 until the end of the episode where she has to tell her husband his dad died see that is subtlety but stupid shows stupid shows it's like oh no we have to get all the gifts nailed and it's just like <laughs> no you don't no, you don't. <laughs> or the, I have a really big thing to plan. I'm going to ask all of my shithead, unreliable friends to help me on this very important task just so we can make sure they fuck up the entire thing. And it doesn't go to plan as it should have been at the end, but it's still okay. Yeah, it's holiday episodes. Do this. <laughs> or birthday episodes. Yeah, birthday episodes, uh, Thanksgiving episodes are really bad. It's like, what happened to the dinner? Oh, it, the dog ate it. <laughs> it's like the dog ate a whole turkey, 40 pounds of macaroni and cheese. Okay. Sure he did. So your dog died. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> your dog died. I'm We're sorry. We're just adding an extra layer to this episode. Instead then. of us, Got it. instead of us just all like randomly finding you know Chinese grocery stores that are open uh, on Thanksgiving Day, how about we just help you bury your dog? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it is like that's how the song that's how it is uh, but uh, your ticket clock but the my favorite are the race card episodes uh, because they can be very serious or they can be out of touch so badly <laughs> family guy can be very out of touch uh, my favorite is the, the world is ending so they're all doing shit off their bucket list or some shit and Peter did something he went into a ta- he went into a black neighborhood and came back and it said king of black people on a sash with a scepter and a crown and he's like I said it <laughs> and they respected me for it <laughs> and I'm just like what the fuck <laughs> the fuck <laughs> like, and you got that you got that but in live action you got people say well uh, king of the hill as a cartoon uh, is Hank racist no He's ignorant. He's ignorant, but he's, not, but he's not racist. He's not vehemently racist. Like when Bernie Mac showed up to fix his water heater, he did Lady Bird was racist. <laughs> Lady Bird it was a racist. She hated service people. <laughs> she hated people that were in Hank's house. I mean, that's at least what they want to say. Yeah, that's what they want to say. <laughs> Lady Bird, is, you know, hunted down James Earl Ray. <laughs> uh, that's what Hank said. His, his mama hunted down James Earl Ray. <laughs> The guy who killed Martin Luther King. So he's not a racist. He owns the dog that helped catch the killer. <laughs> uh, but it shows like Roseanne, where uh, the kid didn't want to kiss a girl, stuff like that. Um, and they find out the girl was black. And it's not because DJ didn't want to kiss her because she was black. It's because she was a, he didn't want to have a kiss with a girl like that. And in front of people. And it gets misconstrued very quickly that all oh, the Connors are racists. Mm. You know, that's why DJ didn't want to do it because he's grown up in a racist household and being told racist shit. And he's not, it's never brought up and it happens in cheers. It happens. Cheers is my favorite version because there's not a lot of black people in cheers, but they're usually background characters and they kind of take care of it very quickly. Um, they take care of it pretty quickly, and because it's it's a very like no, we're not have a drink, shut the fuck up, yeah, and, you know, because it's a bar. But then you have ones like um, Andy Griffith, which is in the '60s, you know, where you have a situation brewing between you know Andy and Opie's coach, who is a black man, and you're thinking, is is he racist? It's like no. It, the the football coach just told him, "Hey, Opie, you should really take piano, not because you can't play football, but that's an important skill to have." And Andy's not seeing it that way, <laughs> even though Opie's like ninety fucking pounds, soaking wet. He shouldn't be playing fucking football. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but like th- those those last two are like the the end all be all. The, the, the ticket to bomb ones are fucking hilarious, <laughs> and it, the race against time. They're always holiday episodes too. That's what I fucking hate. It's like we got to get all this shit done tonight, and it's like I get it. It's a holiday. You guys can get together and eat another day. <laughs> we all got we to, do it all the time. We do it all the time on Saturday before the Super Bowl. We all got together, played Uno, yelled at each other, played Mario Kart, and shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's a perfect way to round off this episode of the Couch Potato. Thank you all again for listening. Check that episode description link. Sign up for the Discord. We're gonna have a little segment in there for Chris and all his travels, uh, along with this is a fun place to share some memes, and we got. A whole bunch of chefs and wannabe chefs in there, Tyler, uh, sharing their own recipes and all that good shit. We got music gear segments for all the band nerds. And I can't wait have, for Tyler to come down. I know it's gonna be great. Just me, he's, just gripping. He's gonna, he's gonna be here. Just me gripping the mic. I'm coming for you. <laughs> no, the, 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 he'll, the, he'll it gets be dark outside. And thunder starts cracking. I'm coming for you. Yeah. <laughs> But sign up for the Discord. Have a little fun with us and tune in next week. We're going to try and make sure and keep this on a regular schedule again. But I think making sure, even if we miss a week, I think people are enjoying the up-to-date, brand new that's coming out. And actually, as a side note, I did hear from Mikey that he wanted us to do a weekly South Park update. But we're a little behind on that now. So maybe next season we'll do it as a a weekly South Park Mm -hmm. roundup. But for this episode of The Couch Potatoes, I've been Alex. And Chris, do you have any sort of final thoughts for us? I don't have a final thought. I have a final message for anyone in the Discord and any one of our listeners. Hit us up 
or hit me up personally if you want to be on the cryptic conspiracy episode because i'm gonna try to bang as many of these out as humanly possible fuck yes yes open invitation i don't give a fuck how crazy it is jimmy carter's dying he killed reagan i, I got a proof it's in the jelly beans <laughs>